Pixies here and welcome everyone to this Paint With Me video. Today I am going to bring you to painting adventures. I am going to share how I create three different illustrations. I will also chat a little bit more about the bird book which I plan to self-publish and kind of my thoughts about it and when it will be ready and how it's doing. I also will be answering some of your questions. I recently posted community post here on YouTube. I guess without further ado, grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee or any warm cozy drink. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave this video a like so it will reach more people. So I thought I could chat from the beginning because I don't know if you have watched my past videos or if this is the first video you're seeing. But basically I am graduate of a master's children's picture book illustration course and for a long long time I have been wanting to publish books. In the beginning I thought I will go towards the most traditional route which would be signing with an agent, working together with an agent, finding client, then working with publishing house and then publishing picture book. A little fast forward, almost three years from that moment, I haven't published books with uh, publishing houses. And for past year, I have been really thinking that I could actually share my art online and publish books myself. So I am in this journey of publishing my own book. This will be my first bigger project I have initiated myself. And I'm going to chat a little bit more of why I started doing it and what are my plans moving forward. This project started with my love of birds. I think this year they kind of quickly started appearing in my illustrations and because I don't have pets myself and I really love animals, so I started feeding the birds and it just clicked that I really enjoy their presence. The singing is beautiful, the little chirping they do and uh, just watching them brings me a lot of joy and calmness. So for this whole year I have been feeding them and I slowly started drawing them because I felt this is the subject matter I want to do in the future. And now I have done more than 25 full-on illustrations with the birds. I remember in May, I decided I will do my own art challenge. I have done several of them in the past uh, with Calmtober and Windowsill Stories. And with the bird challenge, I thought I will just paint birds just for a month and that will be it. But I quickly realized that I actually want to do this project for longer period of time. And also like the challenge was really interesting. It was birds in color, uh, whereas I didn't have prompts with the bird name, but I have prompts for color name that could be used as a bird, if that makes sense. And so slowly the idea about book that is connected with color and connected with discovering different types of birds kind of click together um, because I love chatting about color. I love making new color palettes. I like experimenting with color in my illustrations and I do love birds and their presence. It kind of brought me this aha moment
so it started with 12 words and throughout the summer I realized I want to make it into a book and I turned it into I think 16 bird project um, and then I thought maybe I could do a little bit more but I didn't didn't have like precise plan and I think at that moment I did approximately 10 illustrations already with these birds and then I took some time off from this book. Uh, I was in Latvia, then I came back, I did a Camptober, then I had exhibition, then I had shop update. So I only restarted doing this book again in December and I quickly realized that I really want to do it a little bit longer and really enjoyed the process of creating these illustrations. So this will be much more massive project than I initially planned for. I am going to have 28 bird illustrations and uh, I still haven't decided the final number, but my idea is to have approximately 72 to 80 pages in this book, which is a huge project ahead, uh, I know. But... Uh, I think I'm really grateful that I have people who support my work up here on YouTube and everyone who is buying from my shop. And all of my Patreons are really helping me to do this project and after a while, in the end, self-publish it. I couldn't do it without you all, so I'm really grateful for that. And I really want to mention it, all the support from sharing my work here online is really helping me to do it. And uh, although I'm not in the best financial place right now, I really believe in this book project idea and I think it will be a brilliant book. I have already some notes and some thoughts which are around this book. And uh, one of the things I really want to do is uh, to print this book in the UK I, of course, could use uh, manufacturers from uh, uh, China, but I think I really want to print it locally. I really want to support also local businesses here in the UK. I also would really love to have hardcover book. I have printed zines in the past. Uh, if you know, I have some Camtober zines in my shop. I printed Camtober zines in three different years I also have some uh, risograph zines, but for a book, I really want to have it in hardcovers. I think it would make it more extra special. And because it's 80 or 72 pages long, I think it would be better pr protected that way as well. Um, the size is A5 and it's uh, horizontal, not vertical. So it will be kind of landscape size when you open the book. I have a plan to do a Kickstarter and uh, I will just mention briefly what is Kickstarter. It's basically a website where you can share your project and if it gets funded, you do the project. And it's kind of like if it goes well and you reach the goal, you print it. If not, then at least you didn't print everything beforehand and you are in minuses. I'm not going to set goal super high. I think my idea with Kickstarter is that I want to cover production prices and have little bit fees out of everything that is left for me as well. The book uh, printing production will be quite high. Well, not super high, but it will be approximately five pounds per book to print it. So I am thinking that I could sell my books for £30 or 25 I haven't decided yet. I, I, I have approximate numbers in my head. I also thought it, it would be fun to do some extra things for Kickstarter. So I have seen some projects on Kickstarter being funded and it's really interesting to see how other people do these projects and I really like the idea of uh, having option to get ebook which will be cheaper it will not come to your door it will not be physical copy but you can open it online as well I also think I will add signed book copy option where I can draw a little drawing for you and sign it 
um, there will be option to have your name in the book. Um, the price will be higher for that, of course. But this is like if someone really wants to support this project, their name will be in this book. I'm planning to sell some originals in this Kickstarter project as well. And uh, yeah, so there there are some plans already about Kickstarter, which I'm really, really excited for. I think my goal for Kickstarter will be 2500 which might seem like such a high price, but half of it is just printing costs for the book because I really want to have at least 300 copies and then I could hopefully sell them slowly throughout the years. I had Canto Berzin in 2021. That's when I printed 50 copies. I don't have it anymore. Um, second year, I printed 100 copies and I have around like 20 left or 30 left. And uh, this year's Canto Berzin, I printed 140. So I'm slowly moving up like with the ordering. But it's really, really tricky. However, with this picture book, I would love to have more copies and uh, hopefully they will just slowly sell throughout the years. I'm not planning to sell them all at once. And Kickstarter is just to kickstart the project, basically, and uh, pay for all the printing costs and uh, production and sharing and all the fees, covering everything like that. I have 14 illustrations done for this book out of 28, which is half of the illustrations. But I want to make them in my own pace. And I know that sometimes it can take several days to do one illustration. So I am planning approximately to launch the Kickstarter project in July and have it for a month. So from 1st July to 31st. This is approximately how I think about this project right now. So if I do it in July, I have to finish the book in May so I can order copy and I can see how it is before I order big quantities and before it's funded. But if it will happen in July, then I will ship out all the books in September next year. So this is approximate, super approximate. Um, but I thought I could share this to you. Uh, so you know how much goes into the book. And uh, it's not only doing the illustrations. I am doing uh, just some sketching with words. I'm doing some storyboarding. I am planning um, layout of the book. And another thing I want to do is uh, to work a little bit more on cover art and specifically uh, combining my illustrations with lettering. I I think lettering is my weak spot. I am not good with uh, integrating uh, letters with my illustrations. I usually try to do it as little as possible, but I think I need to face my fear and uh, go outside of the comfort zone and learn new things. So this is one of the things I want to do in the ne next year. And hopefully I can... In like learn new techniques and add this lettering into cover art.
Okay, I think now I will answer some of the questions you have asked me recently. One of the question is from Wendy Wells. Uh, from Wendy Wells, do you have any tips for building skills or how how to go about teaching myself a similar illustration style? And uh, where do you find your inspiration and ideas for your scenes? I think it's important to find something that inspires you and find like common themes in your work. Uh, I would suggest you to look to your past work and see what is something you have done more and more and what is something that brings you, you joy and passion. Uh, for the past year, I have been loving to paint birds and it just brings me joy. Um, all the artworks I'm doing, I'm trying to create this cozy, whimsical, magical feel to them. I remember when I was small, I loved looking at pictures in books, uh, more than reading, actually. I would go to libraries just to look at the books with illustrations and not read them at all. I really liked the magical things um, I could see from a lot of details in illustration. I also love the color palettes. So I'm trying to find some parts which I really enjoy. 
and try to integrate them in my art. I recently did this Patreon illustration with girl looking outside of the window, and it's just really inspired by all the things that bring me joy recently. Uh, there is like knitted basket with uh, yarn. There is all which I knitted recently. There are some candles. There is view outside of the window. There are some decorations. There is mug and um, tea. And yeah, I feel every illustration I'm trying to do, I'm trying to see what inspires me, what brings me joy, what brings me calmness. Um, even though I might seem like I'm a really calm person, I am quite anxious sometimes. So art is my escape and I'm trying to kind of slow down and um, enjoy the moment when I'm creating illustrations. I think that the storytelling part comes through me looking through a lot of books and maybe even the course I did, it helped me a little bit to transform my illustrations to storytelling and uh, seeing how I can tell a story even in one page. Because usually when you think of picture books, you think like they're, you should tell a story for like 32 pages, but actually you tell a story just in one page. How is the character feeling? Is the character going somewhere? What is the weather? What do you want this character to feel? You can la like ask so many questions and then you will find the answers. And um, yeah, inspiration for me is in nature. So I think it's great to find something that inspires you outside of creating art and then you can add it to your art, if that makes sense. I have another question and it's from Jennifer. Um, I think I would love to hear more on the process of self-publishing. Where do you get things printed? Do you print as orders come in or do you have things printed up already? Um, so I, I'm thinking of printing book in XYZ. Um, I think I will link it down below as well. I haven't printed from them before. This was the link that was suggested to me by Melanie Chadwick. Um, before I have printed Count Oberzines in uh, print work, which I also have link and I think I have 20% off first purchase if you want to print something. It's just affiliate link. It's not, I'm not sponsored by them. I really like their products and I'm using their printing service every single month when I'm doing um, Patreon physical rewards ordering. And uh, yeah, so usually I print like in bulk and then I ship them from my own place. I don't do pre-orders, but uh, this time with Kickstarter, it will be different because um, it will depend how many people will buy this book and uh, then I will order the books themselves. I have a question from New Flanged and the uh, question is, how do I stick to strict color palette for long project and how I am planning my color palettes for books in general? And uh, I think it's a little bit easier for classic picture book because... Uh, this book which I'm creating, it's more also about different birds and color for each bird. And I'm making it kind of, it's really hard to explain it without showing it visually. So maybe a little bit later throughout the next year, I will share a little bit more of what I mean by this. But basically my book, it goes from white, then it goes to gray, then it goes to blue, green, yellow, orange, red purple, brown. Um, that is kind of how it goes. And uh, every single color is assigned to different bird. So it's really tricky for me to work on like super, super strict and limited color palette. I do have my main watercolor palette, which I'm using. I think I have videos somewhere which I shared all the colors that I have in there. And um, I added, I think, seven more in that palette uh, since I last shared it here. And uh, basically to not overwhelm myself, every single artwork has like maybe seven or eight colors from that color palette. 
I am not using all the colors for each artwork, otherwise it would be full-on chaos. But how I approach it, it's really interesting, because if there is a bird in, um, for example, green color, I am trying to have a lot of greens in that artwork, and then I'm trying to make it as contrasting as possible, so I'm making a con complementary color as an accent, uh, or not complementary but close to that. Um, I am now doing this woodpecker illustration, which is green art color, and there are a lot of browns and greens, but I also want to have a little bit more of brown reds and purples, which would be opposite side of the wheel. And uh, yeah, I'm just slowly improvising a little bit. It's not as strict as I would do it as regular picture books. I think for regular picture books, I would have maybe 10 colors in total for a whole book and I would just use them all and then mix and match depending on uh, scene. Okay, I have a question from Deborah Mayers. I would love to have Etsy shop. Um, can I do it without having social media? I think it's really tricky because um, for me personally to answer this question because I, as soon as I started sharing uh, my art on Etsy, I also started filming videos. I also started to be more active on Instagram because I thought if people could see more of my work and what I'm doing and sharing behind the scenes, the more interest there would be. I, of course, know that it's a lot of work. So I understand that uh, not a lot of people want to share everything online and want to just have this small business on Etsy. I think maybe someone else could give a better answer. I would say if you just want to do Etsy, then maybe searching for keywords could help or some tags and finding, doing research on Etsy, finding a gap, something that is not sold a lot over there, something that is super niche. That is like as much as I could suggest because I think for me, social media and YouTube and Instagram really helped me to promote my art business. And although it's a lot of work, I can definitely see the benefits of doing it that way as well. But yeah, best of luck to you. I have a question from Renat. I have a question from Renat. Thank you so much. Um, how is life going? Do you like living in Cornwall? Do you want to stay here? Do you have new goals you want to reach in 2024? Do you reach your goals this year? That is a lot of questions. <laughs> um, I love living in Cornwall. I think it's such a peaceful place to be. And for a person who has lived most of my life in capital city, I definitely not want to return back. I really like the calm and cozy energy I have in here. I love the countryside. I love seeing a lot of animals. I like seeing a lot of birds here. Not a lot of noise from cars, not a lot of rushing and people hurrying. So it's definitely, I am planning to stay in Cornwall. I don't know if, if it's for the rest of my life, but definitely for the next 10 years or so, or even more. I have a lot of plans for 2024. One of the plans is, of course, self-published this picture book, which I'm working on. And uh, I think I want to speak a little bit more about my plans for 2024 in another video. Of course, I will continue filming videos uh, two or three times a month over here. I will also film video on Patreon, will be active there with uh, podcasts and other things I'm doing there. I plan to do several shop updates. I actually plan to do a second sale on um, my website and also original artwork sale at some point as well. But yeah, there are just a lot of plans. I'm super excited for the next year. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up so it can reach more people. I also want to say thank you so much to all of my lovely Patreons who are supporting me over there. 
you are literally helping me to create this book and make it happen. And I'm really appreciating you all. I also want to say if you stayed till the end of this video and if you want to let me know that you stayed till the end, write in the comments down below, green woodpecker, so I know that you stayed till the end. And have a Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy holidays. Enjoy your time at home or meeting someone else or watching TV, walking around the house with PJs. Bye.